Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Craig and I'm a software developer in the UK and in this video we're going to tackle an entirely new topic and that is tables in HTML. A table is a structured set of data that is nicely laid out and it is made up of rows and columns. A table allows us to easily look at information that is connected in some way. For example, people and their ages or trains and the times that they're scheduled to arrive and any other collection of data that needs to be laid out in a clear and readable way and we'll find out how we build these tables in this video. If you like the content on the channel please remember to smash the like button, subscribe and comment as it really helps us with YouTube's algorithm. Okay so that being said let's get started. In the early days of the web, for some reason, people actually used tables to lay out their web pages. It was, I guess, the lazy person's way to make sure that page elements were arranged well on the screen. This design pattern is now considered very bad practice, so don't do it. You might still run into pages occasionally that are built inside tables, but we aren't going to be developers that build pages in this way. Instead, our layout and presentation will be done using CSS, and we've only got a few more videos to go before we can finally start tackling CSS. However, that doesn't mean that you should avoid tables completely. Tables do have a purpose still on the web, and they should be used when Whenever you need to present information in a tabular format. One common example that you might see are tables for financial data and here I have the Yahoo Finance page up and underneath the chart are two tables actually that are displaying all kinds of information relating to Google's parent company Alphabet stock price. If we go over to the NASA Space Science Data Centers page that I have open here, we have a much simpler HTML table that contains a decent amount of data. Straight away, we can easily interpret the information by making visual associations. We should be able to find a planet that has a day which lasts 24 hours, or a planet that has a ring system and 62 moons. We can find all of this information fairly quickly by scanning the columns and rows of the table. So this is an example of an HTML table and we should be able to do something quite similar. If we pop over to W3Schools, at the top here of this page, we see another basic example of an HTML table. Underneath that, it says that an HTML table is defined with the table tag. Each table row is defined with the TR tag. A table header is defined with the TH tag. And by default, table headings are bold and centered a table data cell is defined with the TD tag. So I have VS Code open, and all I have at the moment is a folder that I've made on my desktop called tables, and we're going to need an index.html file to work in. So I'll go to the Explorer pane at the side and create that, and as soon as I've done that, it will open in the editor. Next, I'll make use of the Emmet shortcut that I always use when making a new HTML file, and that is we hit the exclamation mark and tab, which will build out an HTML boilerplate for us, ready to accept some code in the body section. I'll add an H1 with the text of HTML tables, and I'll add that same text to the title in the head section. And once I've done that, I will hit save. Now I'm going to right click the file in the explorer pane and open the index.html file with live server. I see our h1 and also the title in the browser tab are displaying correctly. I'll check that we do have a live connection between browser and text editor by quickly adding a temporary p tag and five words of lorem ipsum. So I'll save that and we see the temporary change appear in the browser straight away. So we now know that we're set up and ready to go. I'll delete that paragraph that I just added temporarily and now we are ready to start talking about tables. Okay, so tables in HTML are denoted by table tags and these on their own don't give us anything. So if we save and refresh, we can see that. We need to give our tables some content. We need data for our table. But we still have a little bit of work to do with the structure of the table before we can start adding content or data to it. Similar to the actual structure of our HTML file, our table has a head and a body, and these are denoted by the t-head and t-body elements respectively, which are nested inside of a table element. So if I add a t-head element and a t-body element, both of these are nested inside of the table element. I can save time making this whole structure by using Emmet, so I'll just delete everything that I just did, and we can simply type a table, the angle bracket, then T head plus T body and hit tab and it will build out that structure for us. 
Next, we're going to need to add some rows to the table head and table body. So I'm going to do a multiple selection between the opening and closing tags of the T head and T body elements. I'll hit enter to create some space and then using Emmet again, I'll type TR and hit tab to give me a table row and hit enter again to create some space within the rows. So now we have our basic structure, we can start to add the content and data of our table to. The table head has headings and the table body has data. So in the table head, I need to use a TH element for a heading. So inside of the TR that's inside the table head, I'll again use Emmet, and you should be well familiar with the time saving shortcuts I'm using by now. And I'll type TH times three, and then some curly braces and inside here will go our textual content. So I'll put heading and then a dollar symbol. And this will give me three headings that are called heading and the dollar symbol is acting as a numerical placeholder. We can place a dollar symbol inside of an element's name, attributes name or attributes value to output the current number of a repeated element. So as we have three repeated headings, these will be heading one, two and three. So that's the first content of the table. If I save, you see we have three headings on the page now that are individually numbered. And we'll follow exactly the same process for the table body here, except that instead of TH for table heading, we're going to use TD for table data. So inside of the table body's row, type TD times three, then we'll add our curly braces. And inside these, the textual content, which is going to be data and the dollar sign and again, the dollar symbol is acting as a numerical placeholder. So I'll hit tab and we have a table of sorts. To give ourselves some more data, I'm going to copy the row inside the body and paste it twice more. We now have a nice table with some content, but everything is just floating loosely on the page, seemingly unattached. So the very final step for us is to use an attribute. And we looked at attributes in the last video so we should be perfectly familiar now with how these work. We'll add our attribute, which as always goes in the opening table tag. So here we can use an attribute called border and I will give that a value of one pixel. Now, after all of that, you'll see that it changes nothing on the page except it adds a border, which is there because we put in an attribute. Note that our table heading has default bold styling applied to it to indicate that it's a heading and the columns are all aligned as you see. It's not the prettiest thing I've ever seen on a page but in the CSS section of the course we'll look at how we can style tables and get them looking a little easier on the eye than they currently do for us with HTML. But for now we can work with this no problem. So let's take on a quick little exercise. We're going to build out something that looks like an invoice or an order form for some fruits and we're going to do this using tables. I've showed you much of what we're going to use, the table element and its border attributes, the T head and T body, and then the TH, TR, and TD elements. And it will look a little something like this. This is one that I made earlier. And to be able to achieve this, we're going to need to throw in a couple of new things that we haven't explicitly looked at thus far. Namely, these are a table footer or T foot elements, which is used to group footer content in an HTML table. And we'll also include an attribute that we haven't seen yet. And this is the col span or column span attribute. So we can make a cell span more than just one column. And we'll also take a look at another HTML element that isn't specifically related to tables. And this is the line break or BR tag, which we haven't used yet. And all this does is it inserts a single line break. So we can break up our text onto different lines. So if you think you'll be able to attempt something like this yourself, then I would encourage you now to pause the video and give it a go. And when you're ready, I will walk you through the solution of how to do this. So we'll start as always by defining that this is going to be a table using the table element. And this element is going to have a border attribute so that the cells of our table can be seen by the reader much more clearly. Again, CSS gives us better options to do this, but for now, as we are not working with CSS and we're working exclusively with HTML, the border attribute is what we're going to use to help us out. And we'll make the border one pixel. So looking back at the example, we can break this down into distinct sections and I'll just draw these out. We have a T head, a T body, and a T foot 
The table footer or T foot element is one we haven't examined yet and the table footer will come after the table body element. If you are displaying numerical data inside a table, you could use the T foot to summarize totals, for example, as we will do here. And again, it would contain TR elements and TD elements, just like the T body. We see our T head has two rows. The T body has three rows and the T foot only has one single row. Okay, so let's put these into our table element. We'll use Emmet to do these and we'll do each section and its rows simultaneously. So we're going to need to use Emmet to group content. So we'll use parentheses and inside the first set of parentheses, we're gonna put T head, then an angled bracket and TR times two, which will build out the table head with two rows. We want to add some more parentheses and then the addition symbol, and we're gonna say T body, angled bracket, and TR times three, which will build out three rows in our body section. And then we're gonna to add to that some more parentheses, and T foot, angled bracket, and TR for a single row. So we have a T head element with two nested rows, a T body with three nested rows, and a T foot with one row. So I'll hit tab and we now have our basic outer structure for our table. And we'll go through each section now and build it out starting with the T head. So in the first row of our T head, we're going to need two TH elements. So TH times two. The first has the text of order, then the hash symbol and one, two, three. And the second has the text of the 31st of December, 2099. The second row has two TD elements for some table data. The first TD has a strong element applied to the first line of text, and then every line appears to start on a new line, and we can do this using the BR or line break element. So I'll make multiple selections in three places and make the line breaks. Inside the strong tags, we'll put the text of order, and then underneath that, we will put some fruit, 111 High Street and some town UK. And then I will make the multiple selections after order, some fruit and high street, and I will type BR and hit tab to create the line breaks. So I'll save that and I'll copy all of this text into the next TD element as it has exactly the same markup structure and we'll just need to change the text content. So order is going to become customer some fruit becomes John Doe, 111 High Street becomes 10, and on Avenue, and some town UK becomes another town UK. So if we save, we can see that this is looking okay for now. We've made a decent start. It's not exact, but we'll move on to the body and we'll correct the layout for the whole table once we've got all of the content in. So T body has three rows, the first of which has four TH elements. The text in those is going to be product, quantity, price, and total. Then the next two rows both have four TD elements, so I'll do those simultaneously. The first one, I'll put the text in of apples, 100, 0.25, and 25.00. In the next row, we'll add the text of oranges, and then the numbers 50, 0 0.30, and 15.00. We just have the footer now, and this has a TH element with the text of grand total, and a TD element with total, which is 40.00. Okay, so now we have all of the info in just fine, but we'll save and we see it isn't looking exactly as it's supposed to just yet. So we'll fix this quite simply with one attribute that I referred to earlier on, and this is the coal span attribute. If we head back to W3 schools and scroll down to where it has the info about coal span, we can see that this is an attribute like any other and the value we give it is the number of cells that we want our column to span. So let's go back to the design that we're attempting to replicate. And it looks to me like the first TH element in our T head is actually spanning three columns. The TD elements underneath are both spanning two columns each. And you'll notice that they aren't quite as wide as the first TH element, but are wider than the cells in the body. 
and we can see that once we put those in it will do a great deal for us already and the last thing is going to be the footer where the th says total and it's as wired as the first th in the t head section we know that we put coal span 3 for that and if we save and check between the two files we can see now that we have matched the design exactly okay so i think that covers everything for tables there is of course uh, much more that you can do with tables but consider this a primer and keep practicing and making different kinds of tables with different kinds of data in the very next video we're going to take a quick look at html entities before moving on to another big topic and that is html forms so please remember to like subscribe get notifications and all of that jazz and i'll see you in the very next video